Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillahi na'maduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa na'uminu bihi wa natawakkalu alayhi wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyati amalina man yahdihillahu falamudullalah wa man yudulilhu falahadiyalah wa ashadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah wa ashadu anna sayyidana muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh اللهم صل وسلم عليه وصل على اله وصحابته ومن والاهم واهتدى بهديهم واستنى بسنتهم ودعا بدعوتهم الى يوم الدين اللهم اجعلنا منهم وما بعد عباد الله وصيكم ونفسي اولا بتقوى الله اتقوا الله سبحانه وتعالى واعلموا انكم ملاقوه ليوم تشخص فيه الابصار my dear brothers and sisters First of all, I praise Almighty Allah. I glorify Him and praise Him and thank Him for His countless blessings. I pray to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala to inspire us to turn to Him in repentance, begging His mercy and forgiveness, and may Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala honor us to celebrate His remembrance and to worship Him in the best way. as he wants us to worship him uh it is with a sad heart that we have said goodbye to ramadan ramadan came as a spiritual training course in order to help us mold our character develop nurture faith and recharge if you may call it our spiritual battery and strengthen our connection with allah subhanahu wa taala and with the divine word and also thereby come closer and closer to allah subhanahu wa taala today i want to talk about three vices but before doing so i want to remind everyone it is high time for muslims to show that solidarity for palestinians because they are being targeted day in and day out for brutal attacks by a military state heavily militarized their bombs are destroying houses and lives everything that a people were hold clinging on even the little part of a plot they could claim as their own it is being destroyed in front of the eyes houses are destroyed so and yet the world is watching and big powers are silent they if they have expressed they are expressing solidarity with the occupiers the aggressors and they are blaming the victims so it behooves us muslims to get united and join forces with those who are against this kind of occupation wars of aggression and occupation and apartheid and the all of these policies that that state has been following since its creation the state of israel the world must stand against it and rectify bring justice for the palestinians there can be no peace unless they are given their legitimate rights today i want to focus on three vices because ramadan is all about fasting was all about training us spiritually morally and and also mentally the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said salasun muhlikat there are three vices which are very very destructive they are poisons they are toxins and and we need to guard against it you may call it cardinal vices or cardinal sins shohar muta wa hawan muttaba wa ijabul mar bi nafsihi you know each of this vices they apply to individuals and when more and more individuals you know develop this kind and 
vices, what happens, it destroys, in, destroys individuals, destroys communities, destroys nations. And on the closer analysis, we can see everything that we see around now, what is wrong with the world can be traced back to these three cardinal vices. The prophet said, shuhur muta. A person obsessed with greed, all of his actions coming from the greed, his desire to have more and more, this lust after wealth, after money, after everything at the expense of others. Shuhun mutar. And the Prophet said, this was the reason, this was one cause of our causes at the root of the destruction of the previous nations. Because when the greed possesses a person or a nation, they go after others, the individual goes after the other individuals because he's all living for himself. This me, I, it's my, well, it's my saving and I must save at the expense of others. So he is trying day in and day out, all his thoughts revolving around, how can I get that money which belongs to the other person to my pocket? And for the nations, it becomes, you know, the big nations, the powerful nations, they go after the resources of the poor nations. And they have depleted the resources of the world. And it is an estimate that Trump budget for the military, America military budget, almost 900 billion a year. And if you analyze where the, all of this money goes, to so those companies. And who benefits from it? These individuals. And it is done as Eisenhower put it beautifully. I don't have time to read what he said. It is the expense of the poor, expense of the hospitals, expense of the houses, expense of everything that you know others need for their sustenance, for their survival. It's at the expense these people are making money. So they must wage endless wars. These wars will never end because it's all coming from that greed for money, making money at the expense of others. Even if it, the prophet said, it will lead to bloodshed and violation of sanctities and for severing the ties of kinship. And of course, Severing the ties of kinship in Islam is not simply our own blood relation because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Khalaqakum min nafsim wahida, God created all of humanity from a single soul. So severing the ties, the sacred human bond that unites us because that a person is part of me, I am part of him. Shuhun mutar. So how do we Guard against it. Of course, Islam taught us to practice zakah consistently, sadaqa consistently, giving, sharing consistently, magnanimity, generosity, compassion, empathy. So, so the opposite of what these people do. One should share, one should be charitable, one should be generous. And the Prophet said the beautiful example, Kana Ajwadan Nas, he was the most generous. So people would to come to Islam and they say, go to the people and say, oh, oh people, embrace Islam because Muhammad gives without any question whether there is a tomorrow or not because he doesn't keep anything for himself. He's so generous, so charitable. So shuhun muta, we must curb this. So the lesson that we learn from Ramadan, from fasting, we should continue. 
with charitable be action, compassionate, empathy. And number two is Havad Muttaba. A person is not guided by the light of revelation. He is guided by his opinion. Today, we are living in a world where God is taken out of the picture and man is the center of everything. This is the so-called enlightenment. It is darkness, actually. When God is taken out and man becomes the center of everything, his wishes, his needs, his ego, the law becomes relative. Everything becomes relative. There is no final frame of reference for anything. That leads to so many things. An individual who is guided by his ego, by his hawa, he goes astray and he leads others astray because he thinks whatever he, he thinks and he doesn't know that human being is always a prisoner of his own subjectivity. The only way he can escape that prison of subjectivity is by being guided by the collective reason, which is the guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wisdom. Because now I am looking at you. I don't know what is behind me. I cannot see what is on my left side, on my right side, above me or beneath me. So how can my view, my perception, which is very limited, and now whatever I think is all can be related to my desires, to my perception at this time. And tomorrow it could change. So these are all subjective. So it cannot be a frame of reference. You cannot cannot remain guided by following your own opinion. You need to be guided by the light of revelation. The Prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do you see the person who is following his own hawa, his own ego, his wishful thinking and worshiping it as if it were God? And by doing so, he misleads himself and others. The root of all this intellectual discussion, philosophizing, everything can be boiled down, can be reduced. The error root, the cause of the error, the root cause of the error is because it is deprived of that divine light. Of course, divine light with reason is light upon light. And this is the Islamic way of dealing. So Islam gives you a direction how to use your own opinion, how you need to chasten it, how you need to discipline it, how you need to tone it down so that you can see the other, you can use the other lens, different lenses and see you have a ra'i kulli, this is called, our Muslim philosophers call it the ra'i juzi, you know, subjective reason versus objective reason or collective reason or the real reason. The other is limited. So havan muttaba, we cannot. We need to get out of that ego and worship of ego. And the next thing is a person becomes so self-opinionated. He thinks he has become now an academic par excellence. He is an expert in everything. So his view, everybody must follow. My thinking. This is my opinion. This is pride. This is arrogance. Islam disciplines us. If we really worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we pray five times a day, how many times we are making that sujood? And one of the deeper meaning of sujood is to remind ourselves, after all, I am created from that dust. From the dust I came, and unto the last I must go, I will be returned. And that is why when you lower that body in our cups into the grave, we say, Minha khalaqnakum. From the earth we created you, Allah says, and unto the earth you shall be returned. So you are not, after all, that powerful, that all knowing, that all wise. 
you are at the mercy of your creator. So be guided. Humble yourself before your creator. Don't be like shaitan who wax proud. And then he was driven out of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and became an outcast, the cursed one. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Iyakum al kibr, beware of false pride. A believer has to be confident, yes. He need to believe in himself. Of course, believe in Allah first and then believe in the power Allah has given you. This is confidence, self-esteem. So very important. This was a characteristic of the early Muslims. They were confident. So they took over the world. They took over everything and, and Islamized it. They had that confidence that has be Allah. Allah is sufficient. And with the help of Allah, we can master this. We can master everything. We can excel. So now, but you know, it's different from pride. And the Prophet وسلم, when he uh, warned against pride, Sahaba asked, you know, all of us want to wear nice shoes, good clothes. Is this pride, O Rasulullah? The Prophet of Allah said, no, that's not kibr. Inna Allah jameelun yuhibbul jamal. Allah is beautiful. He loves beauty. So he warned us to beautify ourselves, to appear neat and tidy, well-groomed. And that's why Jibreel comes before Rasulullah well attired, well groomed, la yura alayhi asar safar, sports impeccably dressed, spotless. You know, so then what is pride? He said, batarul haq, wagam nas. It is refusal to accept the truth and looking down on others. This was the trait of Iblis. He didn't want to accept the truth. The truth that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made Adam superior. That's the truth. He doesn't want to accept it. So refusal to recognize the truth. Wherever we find the truth, we must bow down. We must submit to it. Islam teaches, speak the truth, even if it is bitter, even if it is against your own interest. Afdalul jihadi, kalimatu haqqin and the sultan and jair. The supreme act of jihad is that boldness to speak the truth to the power. And the Prophet said, So, Batarul Haq, Wahamatul Nas, and looking down on others. I am superior, I am more intelligent, I am better. You know, this kind of how do we discipline ourselves by teaching, by practicing humility, humbling yourself, reminding yourself and myself that. I am, I can be the worst. Hassan al said, one of the spiritual masters in Islam, when you look at that old person who is older than you, force yourself to think that this man could be better than me because he had been, lived a longer life in which he had a lot of chance to do so much good works than I had because I my life was short. But when you see a, Younger person, you should think this person is better than me, could be better than me because he had less time to sin than me. And when you see a dog, you should not tempt yourself to think the dog is lower than you because that dog could be better than you. And that's why a great scholar wrote a book. You know, Tafdilul Kilab, ala kathirin mimman labisathiyab. A dog could be superior to many of those who wear clothes and pants and shirts because dog may be faithful at doing what it is created for by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whereas we are human being, we have that sense of discrimination. But when we choose, make the wrong choices, we could be worse than that dog. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to guard against these three vices and also to always remember to engage in muhasabatun nafs, engage in self-examination, ask whether I am guilty of any of these vices. And also remind yourself, if I were to die today and I were called to stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
Yoma idin toradun. On that day, you will be presented before Allah. Wala takhfa min kubhafiya. Nothing of your secret will be will remain hidden. It will all be exposed. And when that is exposed, are we able to consider that we are saved or we will be saved? And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspire me and you to do that.